Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Hello, Knife Junkie, and welcome to the midweek supplemental episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. It's episode number 109, and I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob DeMarco. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for knife newbies and knife junkies to learn all about knives and knife collecting. Our midweek show where we dive into the weeds and talk uh, knife life news, uh, a little bit of stuff about Bob's state of the collection, which we're doing this week, uh, hearing a little bit about uh, some of his uh, new knives. And we're also uh, going to be um, talking about the YouTube channel. Bob is uh, back in the saddle again with some of the, uh, the video making, Bob. The knife reviewing. Yeah, I've gotten, you know, I, I got last summer, I got into doing the collection selection videos on, a, you know, uh, I do one every other day or so. And uh, I busted out about maybe 60 some or so, about 70 of my collection. And then I lost a little bit of steam with that. And uh, but I'm picking back up because in the interim, uh, you know, I, I've gotten some new things that definitely need to be shown off before any sort of review happens. And uh, also, you know, I never finished what I already had at the time. So, That's uh, right. you know, so I'm bringing them back and uh, I like them because they're the kind of video I like to watch. You know, if it's uh, if I just want a quick take and to check out a knife and uh, hear a little uh, little chat about it and then be off. Uh, that's the kind of video this is. Uh, I have plenty of uh, people that I follow that when I see a nice new 20 minute video from them, I'm excited and I tuck in. Uh, but if you don't have 20 minutes and you want to check out the new, say, DLT exclusive XM18 warning, no choil, then uh, you've got three and a half minutes to check it out. You got seven minutes. You could rewind it and watch it twice. Watch it again. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And you could hear all the brilliance come out of my mouth, you know, twice. What? There's brilliance coming out of your mouth? Yeah, you're not watching the videos, clearly. Oh, okay. Well, I'm listening to the podcast, so we'll give you a chance for some of that brilliance coming up here on the Knife Junkie podcast. Again, episode number 109, but talking about uh, the Knife Junkie's YouTube channel. If you are not yet subscribed, you need to. Just go to thenifejunkie.com slash YT subscribe, thenifejunkie.com slash YT subscribe, and you'll be able to subscribe. Don't forget to click that little bell notification so you'll be notified anytime Bob drops a new video or when he goes live for Thursday Night Knives every Thursday at uh, 10 p.m. So the KnifeChunky.com's YouTube channel at the KnifeChunky.com slash YouTube. So a lot of great uh, videos already in the in the in the channel and more to come. That's right. And every one of our podcasts goes up on YouTube, too. And uh, sometimes it's handy to listen to podcasts on YouTube. I do that at work sometimes. If I'm doing busy work that doesn't require any writing and I can listen to people talking, uh, I'll put it on YouTube and just kind of minimize the screen uh, because I, I can't just wear headphones and listen to my my preferred podcast catcher on my phone at work. Right. It's just not a good look. Right. But if I need to, you know, if I want to listen to something and I'm doing busy work, uh, YouTube is great. So we put all of these podcasts there too. Yeah, I uh, I listen to a lot of podcasts and a lot of um motivational talks and those kind of things on YouTube. Just again, as you said, uh, start it going, minimize the screen so I don't have to watch it. And a uh, little trick I use, I always like to play it at one and a quarter or one and a half speed, <laughs> yeah, right. uh, kind of speed it up a little bit. It doesn't distort the voices too much, but I can listen to more content in a quicker amount of time. So that's my little uh, trick I do. Yeah, yeah, I've gotten in the car with you before to go to lunch, <laughs> and uh, your your podcast comes on automatically, and it sounds like one of those guys who's reading about copy at the end of a commercial. And I'm right. like, how do you listen to this? <laughs> Don't you want to savor their voice? He's like, I'm listening for information, man. <laughs> well, you know, it's so funny. I listened to, um, I forget who it was, maybe even, I think it was Gary Vaynerchuk. I listened to, uh, I've got his uh, daily flash briefing, mm -hmm. and the other day it came on right after I had listened to a podcast, and I was like, who is that? Because I, I'm used to listening at one and a half to even two times speed for some of them. And uh, I, I had gotten used to the cadence of his voice at that faster speed. And then when it came on normal, it's was like, uh, <laughs> is he, has he got a guest today? Who, yeah. who, who am I listening to? So but, yeah. His voice sounds much deeper. Yeah, I, I, like, uh, I like listening to a lot of stuff on uh, YouTube, as you said. Yeah. And you mentioned we put the podcast on there. So there's a, a great opportunity to uh, multiple times during the week to catch some Knife Junkie content, content because this midweek show comes out every Wednesday evening. 
The interview show comes out Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening. And then uh, we have Thursday Night Knives, Thursday night at 10 p.m. And so then the collection selection, knife review videos, all those kind of things, we try to, you know, publish on Mondays, Tuesdays, Friday, Saturday, that kind of thing to kind of spread out the content so you're not overloaded every single day. A lot of great stuff on the Knife Junkies YouTube channel. All right, Bob, what do you say we get into uh, Knife Life News? Oh, let's do it. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. The first knife I wanted to talk about this week is named after a mythical monster uh, in the Odyssey. Probably my favorite mythical monster in the Odyssey, Scylla. Scylla is a six-headed beast. She lives in the crags above, uh, uh, in the palisades uh, between uh, uh, Sicily and the mainland, I believe it was. And uh, you have a choice. You can either steer towards Scylla, who's got six heads with uh, with monstrous uh, fangs uh, in each one of those mouths and snatch people off your ships. Or you can go uh, the other way and, and, and go down Charybdis, which is a giant whirlpool. So that's that's where the term rock in a hard place comes from. In any case, this new knife from Steel Will is named after Scylla, the six-headed beast. And it has a really interesting opening, uh, uh, way of opening. It's just a thumb stud, right? Your standard sort of thumb stud opener. But the thumb stud is sort of, uh, well, it's cantilevered out on the end of an, an extended tang. It almost looks like, when it's closed, like a friction folder. But it is not. It's a, it's a locking knife. It just has this uh, the thumb stud out front. And now you can use it like a normal thumb stud and slow, slowly rotate it out, the blade out. Or you can flick it. Uh, but you can also kind of front flip it, too, if you can imagine a, a protruding tra uh, tang out the front of a closed blade near the pivot. You can just put your thumb on there and pop it out that way. Also, if you ask me, now they don't advertise it this way, but it looks like you could probably wave the Scylla out of your pocket using that tang. You know, just applying some pressure as it as it passes over the hem of your pocket, that tang part, you could you could pop that thing out and wave it out. And uh, none of that would matter if it wasn't such a cool-looking knife. It's got, uh, what is it, a 3.4-inch drop-point blade, and it comes to a very acute point. Apparently, it's quite thin and slicey, and then that, that really acute point, which I would no doubt drop the knife on, comes to an extreme tip. So, I mean, this this looks like a not only a, uh, a nice um, change or, or uh, tweak to the traditional opening setup of a thumb stud knife but it's also got uh this you know beautiful uh profile and seems to be extremely useful there's no flat on the blade it's all belly uh but it, it's very gradual so uh you could basically uh use this in many different ways it mm -hmm. looks like a cool knife so do you like the looks of the knife as much as the story of the scylla or does this st does the story just really make it that much better I, I have to say, Jim, when I saw I saw the knife first and I was like, that's cool. I really it resonated with me. You know how I feel about Steel Will. I'm hot and cold with them. Some of their designs are just gorgeous to me. And some of them are just like, OK, well, all right. They got <laughs> the knife. that out. Too. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> this is one of those ones that I looked at and was like, wow, I can't wait till that comes out. That just mm -hmm. looks great. And then when I found out it was called Scylla, I was like, thank God they didn't name some normal kind of lame knife Scylla. That's what I thought. So. Right. <laughs> or the J275. Right, right. <laughs> right, exactly. It's a good thing they didn't name this very cool knife that they named the Scylla, the J275. Because it would be a waste. Yeah, tragic. All right. Real, uh, real uh, steel wheel. Yeah. So I always That's get what those I do. Real steel wheel, man. Right. <laughs> One company. They should just come together. That's right. Hey, maybe we've got an idea in, in, in store for them there. All right, uh, moving on, uh, Knife Life News, another company that's really one of your favorites, Tops. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love the headline, Two Insane New Knives <laughs> from Tops. <laughs> well, I wrote it that way because they're both, they both have a little bit of insanity. I'm going to start with a short sword, the Kumakage. Uh, Kumakage is uh, uh, designed by uh, Siho, Wase uh, Siho is his, uh, or Sijo, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. It's the title. Wei Sun Johnny Sai. He's a oh my. yeah. He's a knife designer. Wei Sun Johnny Sai is a knife designer who's done a lot of work with Tops. He designed the Kuma that came out a couple of years ago. Uh, looks kind of like a Guka Kukri, uh, a Gurkha Kukri, and was adopted into the GI Joe world. Uh, uh, Wei Sun Johnny Sai is a big GI Joe fan, 
And he's also a, a master in uh, some bladed martial arts and, uh, you know, is an outdoorsman as well. And so you put all these things together and he comes up with some pretty great knives. So this, this short sword, the Kuma Kage, is, has a 15 inch blade, 15 and a half inch blade. It's a quarter inch thick. It's got, uh, an almost two handed handle. And, uh, this thing is, it's ready for the wilderness. It's ready for the battlefield. It's ready for anything. This thing is insane. Well, I was going to say, it sounds <laughs> like it, 15 inch, sounds like it'd be ready for anything. Well, I mean, you know, Tops Knives has flirted with some pretty big knives, but this one crosses over, you have to call it a short sword at this point. Way Sun Johnny Sai, who does a lot of, uh, Filipino martial arts, designed this thing to be as long as his favorite length of Kali stick. I always use seven, uh, 27 inch Kali sticks. He uses 24 inch. And, uh, that means you can get even closer and you can do some, uh, well, that's just his preference anyway. So he made this, this thing that size. And then at the end of the blade, it's got a relatively straight blade until you get to the end. And then it swells out into this bulb and then comes to an acute point. Now that bulb adds a lot of heft to the end of the 15 inch blade, making it even choppier, if you will. And, and that, uh, sort of extreme curve down at the end, it's like a little belly on the end of a long straight blade, just adds the, uh, the power of a recurve, like you would get from a kukri, way at the very end. And that would work great in both bushcraft and battle, if you will. Uh, that sounds so corny. I'm sorry. But it's true. And, uh, and then at the end of the handle, um, where the, uh, pommel is, in Filipino martial arts, that's called a puño. And that is used a lot uh, as an impact weapon as well. Imagine you're very, very close to someone. Instead of swinging the stick, you're just going to take that butt end where, uh, you know, where your pinky is and knock little... him in the head. Yeah, exactly. So uh, Wei Sun Johnny Sai added a nice little sharp piece of metal to the end in case you need to do that. So this thing is is kind of insane. And it's got the top's build quality. And uh, apparently to keep it from being an absolute boat anchor... Leo and, uh, Leo and Craig from Tops, uh, uh, chimed in on the design and put in some fullers on the blade to reduce the weight and some, uh, some additional lightning holes in the, uh, under the, the blade, you know, under the handle and everything. So it's now a, a manageable blade, but this mm. thing is cool. You got to check it out. And there, you can see a couple of videos on the Tops channel on YouTube of them going out into the bush and just like chopping down trees with this thing. Well, I got to ask before we move on to the uh, to the second insane knife from Tops. Uh, mm -hmm. You said it's a fifteen inch short sword, a short sword. So when do what's what what at what length does a knife become a short sword and then becomes a sword? I mean, mm -hmm. is there a is there oh. a criteria or for length? You know, actually, I'm not sure if anyone else has that criteria. I will say. So you said fifteen inch. That's the blade that's fifteen inch, and and I would say that. I, I, for me, it's like 13 inches and over. You're into uh, into short sword area. I, I, there might be plenty of people who disagree with that. Right. Uh, but knives with blades over 13 inches really don't have much more of a use than chopping in field craft stuff or, you know, reach for battle. You know, the longer the sword, the longer reach you have, the, the less in trouble you are, right. theoretically, I guess. <laughs> uh, so to me, I would say a 24-inch knife overall is a short sword well i mean yeah <laughs> 20 <laughs> 24 inches honey yeah. let me pull my knife out <laughs> 24 inches all right all right well speaking of other insane tops knives you wanted to talk about a yes. cleaver karambit yes that sounds insane right there those two words together thank you uh, it is it, it is the second insane knife from tops that's just coming out now it's called the title force and let me just say, when I say insane, I'm not saying not totally cool, not totally useful. It's just, it's just something I never would have thought of. Uh, this title for us certainly, uh, is, is, uh, chief among that because it's, it's a field cleaver that's got lots of nice organic curves to it, uh, as is. It, it looks kind of like, uh, kind of looks like a cartoon cleaver in a way. It's got a, a real, deep swale in the back of the blade and and uh and the the cutting edge is uh is nice and curved but the interesting part is attached to this is a curved handle with a ring on the end like a karambit and to me it's just uh I, it's cool and it's interesting but i'm not exactly sure why why <laughs> because <laughs> but, you can well because you can why not 
it's a it's it, it's an almost five inch cleaver blade. So it's not a huge. Uh, you know, the first thing I thought of is if you have your pinky in there and you have a huge chopper, you can mess up your pinky if something goes wrong. But this is a, a, a you know, it's a it's an almost five inch blade. It's uh it's their usual ten ninety five, and um you know I could see using that that uh, ring at the end for generating uh generating more um, inertia is that right no generating more momentum in your chop you've got a small relatively small blade as is uh so if you choke down if you will and put your fingers uh, one of the one of your fingers through that ring i could see using that ring to to sort of hinge the relatively small blade on to get as much chopping power out as possible but i just think it's a cool thing and maybe that's what they were thinking too hey why not a cleaver with a ring on the end, you know, a karambic cleaver. No one's done that before. And uh, it's 11 and uh, 11.8 ounces. It's got a kydex sheath. It's got burlap micarta scales, which are absolutely gorgeous. I love bur- burlap micarta. And and I'm really looking forward to seeing this. I've only seen still pictures, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing this in hand, in someone's hand, doing work. I want to see, you know, what it's like scale-wise, too, because... Uh, I see it in the hand in someone's hand. You don't know if someone's hand is small or large. It uh, so I don't know. Just to see it in action is is what I want. But interesting, insane blade. The title force. Well, and it's also interesting that uh, coming up with new ideas, new things. Uh, as long as knives have been around and swords have been around, there's something new all, yeah. all the time. It seems like. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And and you know what else is kind of neat about this? I got to say, uh, they they give themselves a they put their own design flourish at the end of okay so you know how tops knives has the dot the long bar and the dot and i believe that's morse code for something i don't know maybe tops maybe sos i have no idea uh but you see that on a lot of their knives these uh the hole and then the slot and then the hole cut into the top of the blade well they did that in this blade but at the very end of it so the hole acts as the hanging hole that you see on a traditional cleaver the first hole, and then you get the slot, and then the other hole. So it's kind of a clever, um, clever nod to the traditional cleaver design, while uh, while being on this insane modern amalgamation. Right. This insane uh, <laughs> amalgamation that Bob said that insane. he desperately that he desperately wants. <laughs> this thing is ridiculous. Where do I buy it? Well, you mentioned uh, tops knives, a couple of new ones. I want to remind you that on episode number 48, we had Craig Powell of Tom's Knives on the uh, Knife Junkie podcast. You can find that by going to thenifejunkie.com slash, uh, four, the knifejunkie.com slash 48, thenifejunkie.com slash 48. And I know that was one of the interviews that you were uh, really looking forward to having, uh, since you were such a big Tom's fan. Yeah, it was great talking to him because Craig, uh, is so, uh, integral to the, uh, company. Uh, that he knows everything that's happening in there. He has the inside scoop, and he also has a lot of influence in in uh, some of the designs in their knives. So, yeah, great to talk to him. All right. Next up in Knife Life News, we're not going to talk about a knife. What? I know it's crazy. This is an accessory, if you will. It it is, and it's a it's it's an accessory whose time has has. Uh, well, I'm I'm glad it's here. Let me put it this way. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, it's a hoodie by a California based clothing company called. What are they called? The Spindle Collective. And they have a new hoodie out called the Sigma 50. And it is optimized for the EDC person. Oh, tell me, tell <laughs> me more. EDC-er. Well, it's a, it's a pretty stout hoodie that's got, um, you know, top, top materials and cuffs that won't, you know, uh, get out of shape. And, you know, all of those things, we'll get those out of the way. It's a really nice, uh, really nice hoodie. And, and all of that. But being optimized for EDC use, uh, it's got a number of pockets on the inside, which you usually don't get on a zip-up hoodie. I, I have a million of them, and I have I have no EDC pockets in any of them. Uh, so there are three EDC pockets on the inside to lighten the load uh, of your jeans pockets, uh, presumably. So you can get a knife, you can get your phone, you can get uh, lighters and flashlights and those kind of things in these little pockets on the inside. And then the cord that goes through the hood to, uh, you know, to cinch down your hoodie if you need right. to do that is, up. yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it's five fifty paracord, uh, so Ooh. and it's a it's a it's a nice length of it too. So you can you can draw that out and and you know five fifty paracord you can gut and you can use the seven or however many strands that are inside. You can 
tie those all together and get a quite a length of pretty strong string out of it. So uh, it's an Indiegogo project, another crowd uh, sourced, right. uh, crowd funded project, and uh, I think it looks it looks really cool. I looked at two of their other jackets that they've put out. Uh, one's called the Half Century Coat, and the other is a Forever Flannel Woolen Jacket, and they both look awesome. I'm a jacket guy, like. I like clothes just fine, but I love jackets, and uh, <laughs> their stuff looks cool. So I highly recommend it. The Jacket Junkie. Having never worn, <laughs> yeah, that's my next podcast. The Jacket right. Junkie. I follow after my dad. There's like a there's a, a special jacket for every like five degree spread of weather. Mm, okay, and every occasion has a special jacket as well. <laughs> that's right. And now and now you have hoodies that you can keep your uh, everyday carry items in, as you said, to to lighten the load down below. I think it's cool. I think it's a great idea. And yeah, absolutely. And with uh, with the proper construction, now I have to say this: none of the hoodies I have, which are just regular sweatshirt shirt material, would I want to like have a bunch of gear stowed inside of because then it would be just like a swinging pendulum on the right. front. Uh, but this, uh, the build of this hoodie seems to be really stout, and uh, uh, I think that will help carry the weight too. It's like that material is what's going to carry the weight as well. How stiff, how how firm that material is. So right. Great idea. All right. Great idea and uh, great thanks go to Knife News for uh, bringing us all these stories that yes. uh, Bob has a chance to talk about each week. Uh, knife News always seems to be on the forefront of uh, keeping us up to uh, up to date about what's going on in the knife world. That's right. And and not only is, is it a great resource just to find out what's going on, but I have to say Ben Schwartz is an, a fantastic writer. He is a really good writer. So, I mean, you read three paragraphs about the new steel wheel um, knife and you feel like you've just read a short story. <laughs> you know, he's a, he's a very good writer. So check it out. Follow the knife junkie on Instagram at the knife junkie.com slash Instagram. All right. Back on episode one Oh nine of the knife junkie podcast and our uh, section now that's uh, giving Bob a chance to talk about some of his new knives is what we call the state of the collection. And uh, not only we're going to uh, talk about his new knives, but also, uh, promote the uh, ultimate steel, give a chance to talk about that, but also talk about our knife auction mm -hmm. uh, that uh, Bob is going to be doing. So uh, first of all, uh, we've talked about the collection selection videos already. Just want to re remind folks again that uh, Bob's YouTube channel is at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube, and you can see uh, videos about these new knives that are in his state of collection, including the new Hinderer XM18 Warney and the Triway Pivot, and that's uh, something you wanted to, to talk a little bit about. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you've been listening to the podcast at all in the last week, you'll know I can't stop talking about uh, the new DLT exclusive, DLT Trading, one of my favorite uh, online knife purveyors. They do a lot of exclusives, not just with Hinderer, but with uh, Medford Knives and, and others. And uh, their newest exclusive with Hinderer is the XM18 3.5-inch no choil, that's the real USP, Warncliffe Triway knife. And so I, I couldn't resist. I love the Hinderer uh, Warncliffe. I think it's the best looking uh, Warncliffe out there. And uh, I can't say it's the best performing because I haven't tried them all. And But uh, I, I, I absolutely love my XM24 Warney. So when this came out, I had to jump in because I've been wondering what a Hinderer knife is like without a, a choil. I'm not much of a choil guy. Of a finger choil guy. I like to have the blade, the sharp edge come kind of all the way up to the handle. That's just how I like it. And that's what, uh, that's what you get with the, with the no choils models that, uh, that DLT is coming out with. This isn't the first one. They have the slicer model, I believe, in a no choil, and they might have another one, uh, maybe the, um, Spanto. But anyway, uh, in having this for a week, you know, it came loaded with the, uh, with the bearing uh, pivot, but or with the bearing uh, collars, but you know that uh, on the triway pivot they also send you the traditional nylatron, and then they also send you phosphor bronze washers. And uh, I have yet to put the other two on because, which is what I thought I would do immediately when I got this thing, try them all out, see what how they all feel, and can compare them. But uh, having my first XM18 on bearings, I, I don't want to change it right now. It's amazing. The action is incredible. And the detent is close to too strong, especially with the, uh, with the shape of the XM18 flipper, which is kind of like a, a little, <laughs> a little blade you have to put your finger on to open up your big blade. 
And uh, the detent was very, very stiff when I when I first got it. But over a week of obsessive flipping. Sorry, I just did it, Jim. <laughs> That's perfectly fine. Flip away a couple of times. <laughs> With the obsessive flipping, it has uh, broken in. And, and I can already feel that the knife itself is starting to to break into it is getting used to itself if you will starting to understand its own power and uh it's coming and out its handler <laughs> and, and its handler i am yes it, like breaking a horse i am bringing this hinderer into my you've broken it in <laughs> i've broken it in actually i have a very good friend who actually does break horses or used to so that that's no mean feat and i don't mean to compare breaking in a knife to breaking a horse but uh over a week, this thing has now become so smooth that, uh, you know, not only in, in how it rolls out, but in how it actually deploys that, uh, I, I'm in love with it and I don't think I'm going to change the, uh, change the, um, change it to phosphor bronze or, or nylatron anytime soon. I think I'm going to leave it like this and, uh, just kind of roll with it. I, I love it uh, and I'm going to stop talking about it in three, two, one, and I'm going to talk about my new, I got another new knife. I got the Kershaw Bare Knuckle. Uh, this is a knife that, you know, it's been out for quite a while. I'm, I'm late to this party as usual, but I saw it for a very, very reasonable price by, uh, uh, by Bella Blades on Blade Forums. Great guy to do business with. And he, I got a great price for it. It's, it's, uh, just a standard 14C28, 14C28N blade. Uh, that's the standard that they have, but it's got a black wash finish on the blade and it's got a dark green um, anodization on the aluminum handle. And, uh, you know, this thing was quite a, made quite a splash when it came out a year and a half ago. It's USA made, $60 USA made Kershaw with excellent materials and without the speed safe assisted system, but indeed with a uh, roller, with, um, with ball bearings on the pivot. So it is a really, really smooth USA made under $100 Kershaw, not ZT, but Kershaw that, uh, that people have been clamoring for or people were clamoring for a year and a half ago before they came out with it. Right. <clears throat> Again, late to the party, but I'm glad I picked this thing up because it is a really, really excellent knife and it replaces in my heart and in my collection the knockout that I gave away to a good friend. Mm. So, uh, I'm going to keep this and, uh, Keep this as uh, this is going to be a permanent collection knife uh, because it's USA made, and I think that's kind of even though I'm buying other Chinese knives and checking them out, this knife, this knockout, or I mean this uh, bare knuckle, comes with the purchase also of a Civivi and a CJRB. I'm trying to compare knives all in that same realm, and this is the American representative of it, and uh, I think it's an excellent, excellent choice. And if if there are people out there who are interested in ZTs. Uh, but maybe don't want to spend the money on a ZT, ugh, you must check out this uh, bare knuckle because it has all the all the beautiful design of a ZT. You know, it looks very much like the 777, but it's also got incredible build quality and uh, great materials. Mm. So if you want a ZT, don't feel like spending the ZT money, check out the Kershaw bare knuckle. I, I know I'm not the first person to say this, but now you're hearing it from me. All right. So uh, it's just more nagging from the internet to tell you to get this Kershaw bare knuckle. So uh, what took you so long to get it? Were there other knives uh, that you were in pursuit of and that w that one was on your list and finally got around to it? Well, sort of. It, 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 I just saw it. It was a, it was a um, you know, you're waiting in line and you see that bag of M&Ms and you just snatch it. It was gotcha. one of those kind of purchases. Uh, but the reason I didn't buy it when it first came out is because being realistic about it, I know it's not going to be one of my main, it's not going to be an EDC. I'm not going to carry it with me oh, all the okay. time, except for the fact that it is thinner than I expected. So I, I probably will draft it into an in the waistband uh, sort of role because it's, it's thin like that. But I didn't get it originally because I knew I would, I would probably pick up a ZT out of my collection before I would carry this one. Unless you uh, pick up one of the new EDC uh, hoodies, then you can uh, start <laughs> carrying it every day in your, in your jacket. I, I think that's a moral imperative. And more knives, because that means more pockets. That's oh, right. No. That's <laughs> it right. goes around. It keeps coming. More knives. I got to. And then I know they weren't thinking of this, but you could take your jacket off, zip it up, and then swing it around. It could be a, a makeshift morning star, if need be. Only from the mind of the knife junkie, <laughs> folks. <laughs> 
Well, speaking about your opportunity to get more new knives, we want to talk about two opportunities to do so. Knife Rights Ultimate Steel, a huge um, fundraising opportunity for Knife Rights, but also with donations come entries into your opportunity to receive knives and other products. So, Bob, definitely want to uh, give some promotion to uh, Knife Rights and their Ultimate Steel promotion ongoing now. Yeah, yeah. You know, last year, I, well, I've known about knife rights since their inception. Anyone in the in the knife thing knows about them. But it was only last year, I'm ashamed to say, it was only last year's Ultimate Steel con- Contest, or not contest, um, Ultimate Steel Fundraiser, uh, that I ever donated to them. And I had just had, uh, we, we had just had Doug Ritter on the show a couple of times. And uh, I, <laughs> I felt like... Uh, well, it was a sense of guilt, I got to say, that that urged me into it. And then once I gave money to the Ultimate Steel and to Knife Rights, it was like, why hadn't I done that before? Come on. If if anyone's going to get, you know, if you're going to donate money to a cause that has an immediate effect on your own personal, you know, uh, what what I'm saying is, is you can give money to this and it will help you down the road because they are helping to get rid of these ridiculous uh, knife laws. I'm not saying that... that uh, it's like helping helping children eat in Africa, but it is helping people here in this country carry things that they need, knives that they need to do work, uh, that they need to defend themselves, that they need because they like them, whatever the reason. It, it's no one's business what the reason. Uh, we should be able to carry these knives, and Doug Ritter is our main proponent out there uh, making sure that this happens. So there you go. Please uh, donate to the Ultimate Steel. Now, if you look, if you go to the website, you'll see that at various tiers of of pledges, you know, you can you can give fifty bucks, you can give a hundred bucks, you can give ten bucks, whatever it is. At at each level, you have a chance to win uh, a knife. And of course, the more money you give, the more fancy the knife. A lot of uh, knife makers and knife companies donate knives to uh, to knife rights to auction, you know, to give away during the this fundraiser. So. Right. You do have a chance to win some pretty sweet knives. And then people, regular citizens out there, can also donate a knife at a certain tier level. I saw that Epic Snuggle Bunny uh, donated a, um, a SOG Terminus uh, under his name. And so if you give a certain amount of money, I can't remember what it is, maybe 100 bucks, you have a chance to win a SOG Terminus. So uh, it's, a, it's a pretty cool contest, but really it is a, an, an excellent cause. KnifeRights.org. You can find all the information there or just use your favorite search engine and enter in Ultimate Steel 2020 and you'll be taken to all that uh, great information. And speaking of your opportunity to uh, get some new knives or win some new knives, uh, the Knife Junkie has a uh, auction as well coming up to to also benefit Knife Rights. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it was uh, during our town hall. We had two of our guests make on-air donations to the channel. And... Uh, we sort of stipulated right there and then that we would uh, auction these off and donate the proceeds to the Ultimate Steel and to Knife Rights. And so we have two lots that we're going to auction off and we're going to do it next. Uh, uh, we're going to do it on Thursday, May 14th. It's going to run between 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then we'll announce the winner. Uh, the winners of the two lots on Thursday Night Knives that night. And so we have, let's see, we have the Bob Terzuola lot. Bob Terzuola was one of the guests on our uh, town hall. And he gave us, sent me a uh, a new copy of his, uh, of his classic book, The Tactical Folding Knife. Uh, this is a book that actually um, John Gonzalez, who we, inter- who we had on the Sunday show this week, uh, mentioned he learned how to make folding knives by looking at that book. So right. we have the Bob Terzuola book, the 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 new edition. Uh, we have a great, uh, beautifully milled out Terzuola cap lifter in the sort of uh, uh, Aztec dragon design that is his logo. And then we have uh, the third part of this Terzuola auction lot, the mass drop and Terzuola designed, uh, or the ter- Terzuola designed we knife produced mass drop distributed compact tactical folder. Now they are called drop, as you know, but this was when they were mass drop. So that's what you will see on the box. The compact tactical folder is a knife designed by Bob Terzuola that has a lot of, shares a lot of design cues with the ATCF and also the uh, 
the Fox Knives uh, Terzuola folder. Uh, it's a really, really beautiful thing. I, I must admit I've taken it out of its uh, out of its little pouch a few times because I figured I'm going to have to make a video of it, uh, you know, to tempt oh, people idea. to spend money. Yeah. And, uh, whew, man, this is a hard one to let go. <laughs> you can bid. I, I can bid. That's right. But that would How would that look if I won both auction lots? That would look bad. Uh, we have. <laughs> well, as long as we have the uh, high price that you paid for them, I'm sure yeah, it would be fun. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, then we got another uh, donation from Stu, our good friend at Stone and Steel up in New England, a uh, knife distributor up there. And he donated a an Emerson CQC, Super C, CQC7. Whew. Emerson Super CQC7. That's not easy to say. Just taking your breath away talking about it, <laughs> That's isn't it? right. It's all black. It's got the black coated blade and, and the black handle. It's an immense knife. Uh, it's got a a five and an eighth inch handle. It's got a three and three quarters inch chisel ground tanto blade. It's from 2013. It does not have a box, but it has not used. You, it, it has not been used. Uh, you can tell from looking at the pocket clip and it looks like it's been around probably to a number of uh, gun and knife shows and opened up and put on a table, maybe pawed over a couple of times. But the G10 is pristine. You can tell when people have handled G10 for a while, especially in Emerson, because you can see it's kind of gross, but you can see dusty skin residue in the, <laughs> in the aggressive pockets mm. of that G10. You see none of that here. None of that. How is that for a sales pitch? This thing is a beautiful, beautiful knife. And if it doesn't go for a decent price, I might have to jump in on it. There you go. So the two lots, and this is going to be on Instagram, and it's going to be Thursday, May 14th. Bidding starts at 10 a.m., ends at 10 p.m. How, how does this work on Instagram, this auction? Instagram only. It, it works like this. We're going to have $10 increments. It, the starting bid, uh, I have not determined the starting bid for either uh, lot, but they're going to be $10 increments. And each new bid is a new comment. You have to put your new bid in the new comment because the new comment timestamps it. Uh, okay. And so uh, at, 10, at 10 p.m., right when we're starting, maybe I should do it at 9.59 p.m. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've already said it now. <laughs> right at... Uh, the start. You'll have to get the guest co-host to talk a while on Thursday Night Knives so you can check your Instagram. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. I don't know if I planned this right. But uh, yeah, at, at 10 p.m. Thursday night, it will be the last comments, the last time stamp, stamped comments with bids. That will be the winner. So anything after 10 p.m., if you comment and bid, you're out. It's got to be before 10 p.m., but the last one commenting with the bid before 10 p.m. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Wow. So it should be fun, and it'll Sounds be a, exciting. Yeah. It'll be a fun afternoon, kind of keeping my eye on uh, on Instagram, seeing seeing what's what. But that's a uh, it's a, a a little over a week away, so I'm going to build up a head of steam on it beforehand. Okay, we'll look forward to uh, seeing that on Bob's uh, Instagram. That's uh, Thursday, May 14th, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Your chance to uh, bid on a couple of uh, knife lots there, if you will. And uh, if you are not yet on the Knife Junkies Instagram, that's the knifejunkie.com slash Instagram, the knifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and we'll take you right to his feed. And uh, if you're not following along with the Knife Junkie, you'll definitely want to do that, uh, especially uh, follow along on Thursday, May 14th, starting at 10 a.m. Get your bids in early and often to, uh, <laughs> to win that's your right. chance to win some of these knives. And again, all the proceeds going to Knife Rights. All right, Bob. We are uh, running a little bit over our kind of traditional normal length of show, but a lot of stuff to talk about. Final thoughts to uh, kind of close out episode number 109 of the Knife Junkie podcast. I, I don't really have much to say, Jim. I think I've said really? it all today. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I could say something like sharpen your knives or don't take dull for an answer. But I'm just going to say uh, in, in, enjoy the week, man. Enjoy yeah. the week. Yeah, get your money saved up and get ready to bid for uh, those <laughs> th those knives on Thursday, May 14th. That's right. That's right. And be sure to join us uh, tomorrow night for another episode of Thursday Night Knives. If you're listening to the podcast when it comes out, of course, on Wednesday, May 6th, I'm referring to the Thursday, May 7th, Thursday night episode of Thursday Night Knives at 10 p.m. on the Knife Junkies YouTube channel. Okay, so maybe I do have one last thing to say. On last well, of course week's, you do. <laughs> on last week's Thursday Night Knives, we had our good friend and frequent contributor, Spirited Whiskey, come on, uh, you know, video and audio and, and do the uh, knife fight with me, the debate at the end of the show. 
And it was great to meet him. And he got a chance to show off some of his, his beautiful knives, man. His collection is insane. He showed some of that stuff off. I got a chance to meet him face to face after so many comments during the live show uh, in past weeks. And it was great to meet him. I really, really uh, encourage everyone uh, to do the same. You know, when mm-hmm. if you're tuning into Thursday Night Knives and you want to just say hi or show something or whatever, there's no pressure on you. You dip in, you dip out. If you want to stay for longer, we talk longer. If uh, you just have a knife you want to show and then say hi and go, whatever. It was really, really great to meet Spirited Whiskey. Absolutely. And I'd like to do that uh, with others. Well, two things. Uh, he absolutely trounced you in the knife debate. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He yeah, did. so he, 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 was, he was really great. Love to have him back on again. But as you said, anybody can join in on Thursday Night Knives. If you've got a webcam for your camera or if you have a tablet that has the, you know, the camera or just your smartphone. That's all you need is your smartphone. Uh, we have a link for you. Just click on that. Uh, you can come on audio only or video and audio. It's, it's a video show, so we'd love to be able to see you <laughs> yeah. and see the knives you're showing off. But uh, it's as easy as that. Uh, tablet, laptop, computer with a webcam, or even a smartphone. Uh, join us on Thursday Night Knives. So that's, again, Thursdays, 10 p.m. Eastern on the Knife Junkies YouTube channel at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. So, for Bob, the Knife Junkie DeMarco, I'm Jim, the Knife Newbie Person, thanking you so much for listening to this midweek supplemental episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.